Hello and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. For anyone that's a beginner to TFT, there's just so much information thrown at you from the start. There's synergies, items, champions, positionings, economy, and so much more. For today, we're going to make this a little bit easier for you by going over one of the most important factors in the game, items. We're here to go in-depth on every single item in TFT. Even if you're not a beginner, you can still learn something new from this video. Before we begin, remember to click our link below in our description to see more in-depth guides, builds, and ways to win you your next games. There are many courses designed by pro players within the top 1% of the game to teach you the meta and how to effectively climb up the ladder. So go to ProGuides.com today and sign up. Alright, without further ado, let's get back into the video. So every item in TFT is made up of two items components. The eight components you can get are BF Sword, that mainly makes damage items, the Chain Vest and Giant's Belt, that makes tanky items, Negatron Cloak for unique CCs and magic resist, Recurve Bow to make attack speed items, Needlessly Large Rod and Tier of Goddess for abilities based items, and our favorite Spatula to make unique synergies. These are just some generalizations to make it easier for you to remember what makes what. However, we'll go more in depth on what two components are needed for each item. These eight components can, in total, be made into 36 different items. Let's start with defensive items. We have Dragon Claw, Frozen Heart, Phantom Dancer, Thorn Mail, Guardian Angel, Warmog's Armor, Locket of Solari, Redemption, Hush, and Zephyr. First up is Dragon Claw, where the equipped has 83% resistance to magic damage. With how popular sorcerers are in the meta right now, this is a great item to aim for in the mid to late game. The item is perfect for your carries or your tanks. Shapeshifters especially benefit from the item like Swain, who can regen back the health he loses from basic attacks during his ultimate. On to the next on our list is Frozen Heart, where adjacent enemies lose 25% attack speed for 4 seconds. The neat thing about Frozen Heart is that not only do they stack, but units that move will apply Frozen Heart's effect to the units they move past. This makes it a decent item on Assassins, Vi, Pantheon, and much more. Next is Phantom Dancer, where the wearer dodges all critical strikes. Phantom Dancer is a great counter to assassins and works great in protecting your units. The item also causes abilities that crit to miss as well. You can either put the item on your hyper carry like Draven or your frontline CC tank like Gnar. Unfortunately, items like Rapid Fire Cannon, which we will discuss later, is so popular in the meta that it negates the benefits of Phantom Dancer. Moving on is Thorn Mail. Who doesn't love a triple Thorn Mail Braum who's able to cause enemies to kill themselves by simply attacking him? Thorn Mail will reflect 100% of mitigated damage taken from attacks as magic damage. Your tanks are perfect for this item, but beware that if the enemy has Dragon Claw, it will negate Thorn Mail's damage on them. Warmog's Armor is next, where the wearer regenerates 6% of missing HP per second. So for this item, obviously the higher health your unit is, the better this item works. It shines the most with the Shapeshifter synergy, especially on units like Shivana, Gnar, or Swain, as they gain 60% to 120% bonus maximum health when they transform. On to our favorite one, which is Guardian Angel. Almost every top 4 compositions will have a unit or two with the item. Guardian Angel will revive the champion with 500 HP after 2 seconds. It's almost like having an extra unit on board. The strongest part about Guardian Angel is that the champion's ability will continue to go off while it's being revived. So if you have the item on Kennen, he will still be able to stun during those two seconds if his ability gets procced beforehand. Even if the ability does not proc before his revive state, all enemies will switch targets as he revives. This makes it almost a guarantee that he will get his ability off once he's back up. A super powerful item that everyone should look to build. Speaking of powerful items, we also have Hush. Hush causes the wearer's attack to have a 33% chance on hit to prevent enemy champion from gaining mana. It's a really strong defensive item because it can stop a shapeshifter from transforming, an Aurelian soul from using his burst damage, or even a tank from CCing like Cho'Gath. Although not too notable in the early game, it becomes super effective in the late game. Now to one of our weaker defensive items, which is Locket of Solari, which grants the wearer and allies two spaces adjacent to the equipped a 300 HP shield for 7 seconds. It's a health buff that's decent, but not too strong in the current meta. We also have Redemption. Redemption procs when the wearer goes down to 25% health and will then heal all nearby allies for 1200 HP. Redemption can be pretty strong combined with a GA as it will heal the unit while they're going through the revive state. However, there's a lot of counters to this item right now, which we will discuss later. Lastly is Zephyr, which will banish an enemy at the start of combat for 6 seconds. The neat thing about Zephyr is that you can actually target the unit you want banished. During the planning phase, you will see a tornado on the area that Zephyr will proc, which is the opposite spot to your equipped unit. 
This can become pretty important during the late game to stop that Ash from stunning your entire team. However, the higher elo you are, the more likely that players will position against Zephyr, making the item less effective. Now on to the aggressive items. We have Infinity's Edge, Zeke's Herald, Sword of Divine, Titanic Hydra, Rapid Fire Cannon, Static Shiv, Cursed Blade, Gwinsu's Rage Blade, Runan's Hurricane. Infinity Edge's components will soon be changed in 9.19 as they are introducing a new component, Sparring Gloves, in the meta. However, the effects are still the same, where the wearer's critical strikes deal plus 200% damage. It's amazing on units like Draven, who has a high base damage in the first place. Moving on is Zeke's Herald. At the start of combat, all allies two spaces to the left and right of the equipped unit gains plus 15% attack speed. It works well in assassin compositions, where you normally have the units lined up already. However, you may want to save that sword for Guardian Angel or that Giant's Belt from Relanomicon instead. The next item we can honestly skip. Sword of Divine has always been, for lack of better words, a trash item. It's going to be removed in the next patch, so don't bother with this one. Now, on to Titanic Hydra. The item causes attacks to deal 10% of the wearer's max HP as splash damage. Unfortunately, more AD carries that you want attack items on don't really have a high health pool. The item works best with shapeshifters like Jace or Gnar. We also have Cursed Blade, where attacks have a 20% chance to shrink an enemy by a tier. Meaning, if you're against a 1-star Cho'Gath, it can actually become a 0-star Cho'Gath. It's a good item, but unfortunately, there's just so much better recurve bow items that you would rather save for. One example is our next item, Rapid Fire Cannon. This item has been insanely OP since the beginning by having the attacks made by the wearer undodgeable and also doubling their attack range. Also, since it does use two bows, it increases their attack speed as well. This makes it an incredibly strong item on Ash or Draven for extra attacks and also protects their positioning. The item's effect of never missing will be removed next patch, so we'll see how strong this item will still be when dodge items gets introduced. Next up is another great item, Static Shiv. Static Shiv causes every third attack to deal 100 damage to two additional targets. The item stacks and is great both early and late game. In a ranger's comp, this item is a must to deal significant amounts of damage. Speaking of Ranger's composition, Runan's Hurricane is also a great item to have, especially on Ash. The item attacks one additional enemy and deals 75% damage, but also on hit effects. That means that if you're running Glacials, Ash can potentially be stunning two targets at once. You can also put it on a unit with incredibly high damage like Draven. But enough about Ash, Draven, and Rangers, because our last aggressive item is great not only on them, but is universally one of the best items to put on any unit. We have Gwinsu's Rage Blade, which is the most popular and contested item in both high and low elos. Gwinsu's Rage Blade gives a 5% attack speed, but this stacks infinitely. It's great on all the hyper carries we mentioned of even ability based units like Aurelian Soul or Brand, so they can ult quicker. Next up are ability based items. These could be classified as aggressive items as well, but to make it easier to remember, we're going to separate them out. First up is Rabadon's Death Cap. This item allows the wearer's ability damage to increase by 50%. It's a nice boost for your Aurelian or Karthus, but you may be better off making other rod items. For example, Ionic Spark is a great early rod item. The item can be stacked and does 125 true damage to an enemy when they cast a spell. The damage is insanely strong early game and is effective late game too when your opponent builds items that causes the unit to spam their abilities. Moving on is Luden's Echo, which can provide you a head start in the early game, especially on a unit like Lucian. The item deals 180 splash damage on ability hit, making it good on units that can spam their ability. You probably don't want to make this item late in the game, but definitely a good start for an early win streak. On the other hand, an item you would want to build late in the game for ability based units is Seraph's Embrace. Equipping one of these items can allow a unit to ult immediately at the start of combat and then spam its ability throughout the fight. The item allows the unit to regain 20 mana each time a spell is cast. It's perfect for units such as Swain, Aurelian Soul, and Kale. Next up, we have Spear of Shojin, which is essentially the replacement for Seraph's Embrace if you are unable to find double tiers. Although it is not as strong, it's still a great item for units to spam abilities, allowing the unit to regain 15% of their mana per attack after casting their ability. Now for the next two items, we didn't include them in the defensive and aggressive section because they are so unique and strong in their own. Next up, we have the anti-healing items. In here, we have Morellanomicon and Red Buff. Both were balanced to deal 20% max health over 10 seconds while applying Grievous Wound effect. It's a great counter to other popular items like Bloodthirster, Hextech Gunblade, Redemption, and Warmogs, all of which is used to heal the unit. Red Buff can only focus on one unit, while Morellos can focus on multiple. This makes Red Buff more flexible on who you can put it on, but really shines on Gunslingers as they can hit multiple targets. 
As for Morellos, it's crucial that it's equipped on a unit that does AoE damage such as Kennen, Aurelian Soul, or Karthus. It fits perfectly with the Sorcerer's meta right now. With Anti-Healing, we also have our Lifesteal items. Next up is Bloodthirster and Hextech Gunblade. Bloodthirster is for units that are reliant on their own hit ability since it allows the wearer to heal for 40% of their attack damage, so units like Draven or Rengar benefits a lot from this item. On the other hand, Hextech Gunblade heals for 25% of all damage dealt, which makes it great for ability-based units too. For example, Aatrox or Evelyn who deal a massive amount of damage during their ability. And lastly, we have the situational items which are A Force of Nature, Knight's Vow, Blade of the Ruined King, Darken, Frozen Mallet, Yomu's Ghostblade, and Yumi. These items are more situational because it depends on the synergies you need for your composition. They can become the win condition and help your team greatly, or be a useless item for your team. We don't recommend you to build these items early, but be on the lookout to building them for a late game by aiming for a spatula. Use it wisely according to the composition you already have. For more specifics, Force of Nature will grant you an additional unit on board from your current level. It does require two spatulas though, so it may be more worth it to go for some of the other situational items that can create a synergy instead. Moving on with those, it's Knight's Vow, which can make the wearer a knight, Blade of Ruined King, which makes the wearer a blade master, Darken, which makes the wearer a demon, Frozen Mallet, which makes Glacial, Yomu's Ghostblade, which makes Assassin, and Yumi's, which makes Sorcerer. Mittens will also be coming out very soon as well, and that will turn a unit into Yordles. Matter of fact, eight new items will be brought into the meta. To learn about these items, check out our old video where we showcase the new items in PBE, or look forward to our video on Thursday where we give you a patch rundown and brand new item tier list for patch 9.19. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. Leave a comment below on what you guys would like to see next. We read each and every one of your comments. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.